Uh, good morning. Uh, we know we have a lot to be proud of in the state of Washington in our fight against the COVID pandemic. We know we have saved uh, tens of thousands of lives, but we know today the state of Washington is at risk because of the rising cases of COVID and the Delta variant that is so dangerous. We know that uh, progress has been slowed because of that Delta variant, variant, and we know we have to remain vigilant in part and primarily because not enough people have been vaccinated with this life-saving drug that is now available to us. So we know we need to take action. We know we have saved 10,000s of lives because we have always followed science, and we will do that again today. So today I'm uh, uh, announcing that we will continue our safe practices of masking for our students and our young people, and we will ask people to consider uh, masking uh, in other conditions consistent with the CDC recommendations. I want to show you what I mean by this. Uh, the case is going up. You'll see the epi curve uh, that has shown the previous four waves. We now are in another wave. You might call it the fifth wave, but whatever you call it, these numbers are going up dramatically. And that is most concerning because while our hospitals today can handle the, 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 the disease load, that curve is very steep, essentially as steep as it has been in most of the previous waves, and unfortunately is consistent with many of the, if not all of the places across the United States that are similarly experiencing the attack of this Delta variant. We know the dominant variant today is the, the Delta variant, it is twice as infectious. It is likely, more likely to cause serious illness. And it is easily the most dangerous mutation to date of this virus. And we know that this curve is trending upward. Uh, you might think of this as a, as a new virus in some sense, given how different it is from the previous uh, uh, virus mutations. We would have liked to have thought that when we have reached this level of vaccination that we have, would have blunted this virus. But it turns out, the science shows us that the mutations that have occurred in this virus are significantly more infectious that makes it very clear to us that there is one way out of this pandemic, and that is more vaccinations. But until we get more people vaccinated, we've got to be cautious, and that's what we are being today. So it is unfortunate that we are in this position because we have the tools to beat this. We have the tools to break the back of this COVID pandemic, but there are too many people who, although they have access to a free life-saving vaccine, have not availed themselves uh, of that. It is an effective, safe tool. We know it works, but we have uh, challenges getting enough people actually taking the vaccine. I want to show you our vaccination rates on, I don't know if this is daily or weekly, but you'll see that in April and May we were hitting numbers in the 60,000 uh, a day number, and that has declined dramatically where we're down in the, in the single digits, mostly on per day numbers. Those numbers need to improve dramatically if we are going to get to a level to break the back of this pandemic. Unfortunately, it is also very uh, disparate in our vaccination rates from county to county. I'll show you our county numbers to show the difference. Uh, you'll see that it is a high of San Juan County for those over the age of 12 that are eligible for the vaccine of 81.4%. That goes down to Garfield County to 31.7%. That disparity uh, is dangerous and most dangerous in these communities that have these low vaccination rates because we have seen across the country similarities between low vaccination rates and high infection rates. We want to save every life in the state of Washington, east and west, urban and rural. And so we have some more work to do. So I think the challenge is we have to realize there's not just one virus in our state, there's two. Uh, one is the COVID virus. But the second is just as deadly, and that's misinformation. Unfortunately, too many of our citizens have been attacked by misinformation, much of it on the social media, which has caused them to ask questions about the vaccine and have blunted the ability for people to save their lives by getting this vaccine. 
Now, we are trying to uh, bust those myths that have been perpetrated on social media. But I do encourage anyone who has a question about the vaccine to talk to your medical provider. Those are the people with the no. And we have started a program called POP, uh, the power of providers, where physicians are uh, working with us to be willing to share information with patients. The more people do that, the more people will make a decision that will save their lives and those uh, uh, love them. Now, this is frustrating because we are past the point in this pandemic where the general public should have to deal with more restrictions. Because more than one billion people worldwide and hundreds of thousands have had the vaccine safely uh, in, in our neighborhoods and in our country and in our state to show that this is a safe vaccine. But we remain optimistic because we know people can change their minds. We know people, when they get the right information, make decisions to get the vaccine. And most importantly, we know everyone wants to save lives of the loved ones around them. So this just isn't about your life, it's about people around you. And as we think about this, we are confident going forward. Now, there is one very important unvaccinated group uh, that cannot use this life-saving tool, and that is our children uh, under the age of 12. I know many parents are concerned about their young kids. We all are. And this is one reason why uh, we're going to make some decisions today. So we are uh, today announcing we will continue as we open our schools, and we will open our schools this fall. We will continue our existing policies regarding masking. So all students and employees will be required to wear masks uh, around each other in the building, regardless of their vaccination status. This simply maintains our existing requirements for schools. Uh, importantly, this is a legal requirement that all districts will need to follow. We have to prevent the spread of COVID, obviously for the health of our children, but we also want to keep our schools open. We don't want to see waves of this virus going through the schools and force the closure of these schools. Our kids need to be in the classroom this fall. Uh, now, if we can turn these COVID numbers back, we can revisit these, obviously, in the future weeks and months. Uh, but right now, we know that this is a significant risk and we have to respond to it. This is consistent with the CDC uh, guidelines uh, they just announced, but it importantly is simply a continuation of what we previously done with success uh, in the state of Washington. So certainly, while this virus is increasing, is not the time to decrease the protection of our young children. We will protect our young children. For those who've hoped that we would not have to continue that mask requirement, I certainly understand that frustration. But these trends are getting worse. And let us recognize the reason for the necessity of this. It is because not enough people have been vaccinated. But we ought to be optimistic that that is in our power to change. As people get more information, they can make a decision to get vaccinated for their benefit and their families. We believe that that will happen. We simply need to accelerate the rate of that decision making. So um, obviously, we need to think uh, about masking for everyone in the state of Washington. Uh, so we are recommending uh, statewide that people consider wearing a mask regardless of their vaccination stat, uh, status and give thought to the type of conditions when you are indoors about wearing a mask regardless of vaccination status. Uh, this is only a recommendation. It is not a legal requirement. I know it's frustrating for people to even have to think about that. But that's the situation we are in. And the more people that get vaccinated, the less we'll have to think about this. Uh, look, this vaccine works. And frankly, it is maddening that we have a life-saving uh, medicine that can save people's lives that's free, that we still have to be in this position. And we can all do something about that, not just getting vaccinated, but to talk to our loved ones about getting vaccinated. And uh, we know that because we know that uh, the CDC has shown there's increasing evidence that even vaccinated people can transmit this disease. And that's the basis of the recommendation. 
That new evidence makes vaccinations more urgent, both the evidence that this is more transmittable as a variant, but also this new uh, information that CDC has shared with us that even vaccinated people can transmit the disease to other people. Now, that's not to say this isn't a life-saving vaccine. It is incredibly effective, incredibly effective. The vast, vast majority of people who are in hospitals today are, have one thing in common. They're unvaccinated. 96% of all the people in our hospitals today have one thing in common. They didn't get the vaccine. We want to drive those numbers down. Now, we know this has always come in waves, but this is more like a riptide. We hit some major milestones in the summer, but we can't go backwards. If our hospitals are overrun, it won't be just those who have COVID who are affected, those who have heart attacks, those who want to go to the ER, those who have traffic accidents, uh, would not have adequate medical care. We simply can't get back into that, uh, uh, that risk. So um, we're not done fighting this virus. We're going to keep it up. We should have an attitude of defeating it. We should have an attitude of protecting ourselves while we're doing that. And we should have, have an attitude of optimism that the more people get the straight scoop, they're going to be more comfortable with this vaccine. With that, I'm joined by Dr. Shaw. Dr. Shaw, I'm looking forward to your comments. Thank you, Governor. Can you hear me okay? You bet. You bet. Well, thank you for uh, leading on this. And I, I just want to start off by just really thanking uh, all Washingtonians for uh, helping us fight this pandemic. And I, I especially want to appreciate those who have um, done the right thing, which is if eligible, gotten vaccinated. And I think the governor is really pointing out the, the key message today that vaccines are so critical to the success of all of us in the state of Washington. As the governor said, we're seeing increased transmission across our We lost you there for a second, Dr. Shaw. We're looking, we're looking for a technological fix here. Our crack team is diagnosing this as we speak. Dr. Shaw, we're, our evaluation is it's a problem on your end at the moment. I don't know if you want to try a different phone or something. Why don't we give Dr. Shaw a few seconds here? Uh, okay. There we go. We, we can hear you again, Dr. Shaw. We lost you for a minute and a half. Hear me now? Oh, you're gone again. Can you hear me now? All right, give me one sec here. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, well then maybe I'll keep my, my comments brief. Unfortunately, they're too brief. We just lost them again. <laughs> Pardon? I'm sorry. Okay, Dr. Shaw, we're going to move ahead, and why don't you work on your on your connection. We'll come back to you in a few minutes. Uh, I want to make some further comments, and we'll try Dr. Shaw again. A uh, couple good things happening in our state. The child tax credit uh, is now available. I want to uh, uh, ask people to be aware of it and hope that they can apply if they're eligible. This prevents, is a tremendous step in the effort against childhood poverty. Uh, but unfortunately, there is a report that we're not getting people who are eligible who are actually applying for this. So we'd like to encourage everyone, especially anyone who may not, have, may not have had to file taxes in the last two years, to make sure they're included in getting the credit. The easiest way to do this is to go to the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov, and look for the Child Tax Credit Non-Filer Form or contact a local IRS office directly. We're also very hopeful that the Congress will make this a permanent uh, proposal. We appreciate our legislators, sir, uh, certainly Senator Murray and others who are working so hard on this. I want to congratulate our former uh, counsel, Nick Brown, who has been uh, nominated to be the United States Attorney for the Western District of Washington. Fantastic choice, super qualified. He has all the intangibles you'd want in a public service. He did so much for our state in our service and I know who do well uh, for the Department of Justice. Um, lastly, I want to offer our whole state's condolences 
to the family of Clark County uh, Sheriff Deputy Jeremy Brown, who was lost in a tragic shooting. And not only to his family, but to his uh, staff at the Sheriff's Department and the whole community. Uh, he was a 15-year veteran of the office. He was known as a tremendous leader in helping train other officers. He's a former State Department of Corrections employee whose entire career was, was uh, committed to law enforcement. Our hearts are with the Brown family, and I hope everybody will recognize the extent of that loss and the difficulty this profession faces. Uh, with that, we'll try Dr. Shaw again. Dr. Shaw, are you there by chance? For some reason, we're not picking up Dr. Shaw. I would encourage Dr. Shaw if you can call Stacy and see if we can figure out some connection while we're working on this. Uh, with that, why don't we go to questions, and we'll talk to we'll try Dr. Shaw again a little later. Oh yes, Lacey is on. Lacey, do you want to say anything? Uh, Dr. Shaw's absence? Doesn't sound like it. <laughs> sure, Governor. I can go through quickly just a few key points. Um, I'll start with uh, what is included in the school guidance. Um, you heard the governor mention a requirement uh, that schools continue to wear uh, that students and staff in schools continue to wear masks. We also uh, recommend three feet of distancing. However, distancing shall not prevent uh, schools from offering in-person instruction to all students who want it. Uh, this is a recognition of the value of in-person instruction um, and not a change from the guidance we released in uh, May. However, there is um, more flexibility in areas outside of the classroom than that previous guidance. In addition, there are some updates to um, quarantine for schools that will hopefully help more students stay in classrooms to reduce time out of in-person instruction. Uh, so I can stop there and see if Dr. Shaw has been able to join and we can uh, take questions. Okay, don't hear Dr. Shaw. Uh, uh, Lacey's comments, we, we want to make sure kids are back in school this year. These efforts are designed to do that, both by preventing infections and by having flexibility in some of these rules to make sure our students are back in the classroom. Personally, uh, we're looking forward to that success. And thanks to all the educators and the parents who worked so hard on this. They've done a remarkable job in really, really difficult uh, conditions. With that, happy to stand for questions. Governor, it was announced today that New York will be joining California in mandating vaccination of state workers or else um, subjecting them to weekly testing. Given the concern about not enough people being vaccinated here in the state, as you just stated, do you plan to have those same requirements for state workers here? So that type of thing, we know we have to increase our vaccination. That's a certainty. The question is how to do that in a reasonable way. The type of measures that you're suggesting are some that we are considering. Uh, we will be involved in the in the future days in conversations with the broader public, with our employees, uh, with their representatives, with our agencies to see whether that makes sense for the state of Washington. But one way or another, we do have to increase the rates uh, of vaccination. So those will be under consideration. And for Lacey, can we get an update on the statewide vaccination rate that includes the federal numbers? And then also as it relates to vaccine supply, hundreds of providers in the state have j, &J doses that are about to expire in the next two weeks. Can you talk about how the state is preparing to deal with that? And what are your thoughts on potentially having to toss out so many vaccines as cases are going up here and as other places are um, having very limited vaccine supply in other countries? Um, for the question uh, on, so the first question was just, I didn't quite hear the overall state vaccination coverage rate. Is that what you're looking for? Yes, that includes the federal number. Lacey, she was asking we, for, the, for yeah. the, the best number we have that would include the information from the federal government on federal number, federal vaccinations. Um, I can pull that for you uh, in a moment. <laughs> the, and then the second question was um, J and J supply. So you know the the supply around the state 
in Washington and um, federally has shifted to a demand system. Um, our providers are really great about uh, using their vaccines. We also have processes to transfer doses among providers in Washington State, uh, and that helps us manage things like uh, the J&J &J expiring doses. We also are in regular communication with the federal government about, um, you know, the possibility to extend those, the, the expiration date on, on that piece. Uh, for our overall um, vaccination rate, uh, including, I, I mean, the best estimates we, we have are our own data, and that is because we use a more recent uh, population estimate from OFM as opposed to the denominator the federal government uses, um, which is a bit older. Uh, so our current um, rate is one moment. Well, why don't we go to the next question and I'll get it for the governor in one moment. So Lacey, can I just have you kind of follow up? Are there concerns that if the expiration date isn't extended or you're not able to reallocate some of these vaccines, the real potential that you may have to toss tens of thousands of doses of vaccine? Well, we want to use our doses as efficiently as possible. I think, uh, you know, we encourage those to be used by Washingtonians stepping forward to get vaccinated. Uh, and then, you know, otherwise we're working with our providers to move them around um, or, you know, of course, the federal government to get them to other places that need it. Governor, we are. Yeah, why don't we pause, see if we can get Dr. Shaw in here. Joe, if you can hold on just a second. Yeah. Can you hear me okay, Governor? We can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, perfect. Sorry about that. I apparently have a bandwidth issue, so it's my video. So now I'm on by audio only. Apologize for that. Um, and you can still me hear me okay? Yeah. Perfect. All right. So I want to let me start over and just keep it brief. Um, as Governor said, we, we are seeing increased transmission across Washington, and that should concern all of us. We, we know that vaccines work. We also know that masks work. We know together they help people stay protected. We're seeing the Delta variant more so than ever in our state, and that's similar to what we're seeing across the country. Vaccines and the protection from vaccines are still holding steady. They still work. They're still effective. They're still safe. But this increase in transmission across the state should be a wake up call to all of us. As you all know, the CDC yesterday announced uh, a number of, of different things they were looking at across the country. That was an important announcement. This pandemic rages on. It's not stopped impacting people. And so what we wanna do is make sure that as the governor said, that people across the state of Washington really consider wearing a mask in public spaces indoors especially when there is more transmission in the community around them and or they're not sure what's happening in that indoor space. Those who are vaccinated, let me be very clear, are largely driving this increase in transmission across both the country and the state of Washington. But we also know that we have a way to be able to help all of us, and that is to get vaccinated. If you are still waiting to get vaccinated, we're encouraging people, it's easier than ever to get vaccinated today. And we also are saying that if you are in a situation where you are fully vaccinated, thank you, but please encourage somebody else to get vaccinated as well. As the governor said, we're substantially in alignment with what the CDC is thinking. We have increased disease transmission across the state. We recommend that people consider wearing a mask statewide, even if they're vaccinated, because there simply are just not enough vaccinated people out there. Let me close just by saying that as the governor mentioned, that 96% of hospitalizations among COVID-19 people were in those who were not fully vaccinated. That should concern all of us. And that should be a call to action for all of us to get vaccinated. It is absolutely critical that we do this across the state. 
but we're also very concerned about our children. And that's why when the governor mentioned the school guidance and the change in the school guidance, at least the maintenance of the school guidance, is really from our standpoint so critical because we know that it's important to protect our young ones and we're gonna do everything we can to do that. And let me just also finally close by saying that there is a way out of this, which is that as we're seeing increased transmission across the state, we are concerned that it is certainly in many pockets of our state where people are not fully getting the message that really, if we wanna end this pandemic, we do have to get vaccinated and do whatever we can. We have launched a number of initiatives, as the governor mentioned, including the power of the provider, talk to your doctor, talk to your healthcare provider. We've also doing mobile outreach. We're doing everything we can to work with our local health jurisdictions, our tribal vaccine partners, our private sector, and until we get more Washingtonians vaccinated, we need to continue to remind people to consider wearing a mask when they're in public indoor spaces. Governor, with that, I'll just turn it back over to you. Thank you, but we, we saw this. Governor, you said Delta, Delta variant's more transmissible. You said we're entering a fifth wave, big vaccine discrepancies by county. Dr. Shah just said the pandemic rages on and there's substantial transmission across the state. Why aren't you uh, Why aren't you doing a mask requirement? Why is this uh, voluntary? Well, it's voluntary for uh, a, a reason that number one, a lot some people got vaccinated in the hopes that they'd be free from wearing a mask. Well, we we want them to essentially continue that that benefit, if you will, to encourage people more more people to be vaccinated. So we want we're mindful of that that some people got vaccinated because they didn't want to wear a mask. We want, in some uh, to the extent we can, honor that that benefit of becoming uh, vaccinated. We also think there's a significant uh, possibility that we're gonna increase our vaccination rate. Now, as I've indicated, we are gonna be considering doing some things in the, in the upcoming weeks that we will believe will be effective to include the vaccination rate because we just can't have unvaccinated people injuring their fellow citizens. Look, people who are unvaccinated right now are a danger to their fellow citizens. They create a risk to their fellow citizens. And that's a danger that we can't ignore. So a combination of wanting to honor this incentive uh, that people thought they got from the vaccination and the fact that we are going to be more assertive and I think more effective in the upcoming weeks of increasing vaccination rates, we think that's uh, the right approach. But, but given the the upcoming weeks and then if you can get the vaccination rate really boosted then you still got a couple weeks or a few weeks lag for, for we're talking about substantial more numbers of people being vaccinated in case it could go up pretty fast yeah you know, well i think that that's true obviously these things do take time you point out an important fact but that's one of the reasons we're acting early look the reason we have been successful saving tens of thousands of jobs of lives the reasons we have not had our hospitals overrun, like other states have, where they had to put people's remains in refrigerated trucks, like other states have had, is because we have acted earlier. So we're acting, in some sense, early on this fifth wave, so we can avoid that and have time for these new measures to kick in before our hospitals are overwhelmed. We have some weeks to accomplish that. It's not forever, but it's some weeks. So in the upcoming weeks, we are very hopeful that people will talk to their physicians, learn the truth about this vaccine. You don't grow antlers out of your forehead when you get this vaccine. You get your life saved, and you stop being a risk to your neighbors and your family. That's what happens, and when more people talk to their doctors, that's what they're gonna find out. Governor. If Governor. Yeah, Dr. Uh, Shaw, go, uh... go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we also reminded our media partners that the secretary order for those who are unvaccinated, who are required to wear masks in public settings, that that indoors, that that order is still in effect. I think the challenge we've had is simply the people who are unvaccinated are just not doing the right thing by wearing the masks as well. And that's the requirement. And so that does not change. But I do think, as the governor said, this is a this is based on the information we have based on on transmission and what we're seeing across the state. This actually 
continues to be, in our minds, the right step at the right time to be able to protect Washingtonians. But the requirement for unvaccinated people to wear masks remains. And we want to make sure that that is also known for those when they're out and about, that they've got to be able to protect others around them as well as themselves. Important point. And people need to realize this is a legal requirement on the employer. So the employer has a legal requirement under our labor and industry rules to require their unvaccinated personnel to be masked indoors. That is a legally binding, enforceable uh, rule of the state of Washington. That part is not a recommendation. And if your employer says you're not vaccinated, you need to put on a mask, they're right when they tell you that that is a legal requirement. That is enforceable by, by large fines if necessary. So we're looking forward to compliance in this regard. Governor, if reopening schools this fall is a priority, why not do more to increase the vaccination rate for 12 plus immediately? And would there be talk of a, a mandate for a vaccine just like measles and mumps in the state? Uh, it is possible in the future that there could we could add this vaccine to the other vaccines that currently are required for all of our students. That is a possibility. At the moment, we don't think that's the right move today. But if we don't get more people vaccinated, if this continues to rage through our the state, that yes, certainly that is a requirement, could be a requirement. And frankly, it's not that earth shaking. Look, our kids have been getting vaccinated for mumps and pertussis and measles for decades. For decades, this has been standard operating procedure in the state of Washington. But at the moment, we're looking for success through other means. Look, even if I may, I don't think it's too much to ask a Washingtonian, even if you don't care about your own health, how about caring about the kids who can't get the vaccine right now because they're not eligible? Maybe care about those kids a little bit, get a vaccine for them. Maybe get it for some people who are immunocompromised and can't get the vaccine and are subject to this deadly disease. You know, maybe give thought to them a little bit. And the more Washingtonians who do that, the more we pull on the rope. People can change their minds. When they get new information, we're counting on that. Uh, the second part of your question was, you know, why didn't we do this right now? We think there are these other measures that can be effective. Again, if Washingtonians realize two things. One, we're all in this together. We all have a stake in this. We all have people we love. And we know what the science is. So we're counting on those things to see us through. Governor, the president now may be announcing that federal employees have to be vaccinated. Why, and other governors have obviously, why wait? What criteria will dictate a decision here? And when you look at that county map, why, since you had a county by county approach previously, why not require the counties that aren't at 70% um, roll back? Until they get there. Uh, we believe that we need to have some discussions with the community, with our labor partners, with other people who would be affected by a decision. As I've indicated, uh, we are going to be having those conversations in the upcoming days. And it is a distinct possibility that would we, we would require, uh, to some degree, vaccinations of our, our, our employees, depending on what their job title is and what their environment is, and or testing or just a vaccination requirement. Those are distinct possibilities in the upcoming days. So we will be having those conversations. We need to have them before we make a decision uh, in that regard. As far as uh, mandating it, we think we're all in this together. We don't have vaccination rates across the state that we need. We want to work together as a state. That's why we've made this decision. Why not go county by county, though, and say that counties that are lagging Reopen We've already reopened. We want to keep our businesses open. This is the whole point. We want to keep our businesses open. We don't want to close businesses. We don't want people to be laid off. We don't want people to be prevented from doing what they'd like to do in their lives. And the point is, we can have that result by getting people vaccinated. And we believe a strategy that is based on uh, incentivizing vaccinations, sharing information, and potentially taking the measures that I just talked about that we are considering, that that's the best route given the, where we are in the pandemic today. Fortunately, we're not in a situation where our, our hospitals 
are overwhelmed at the moment. But we think this is the appropriate measure uh, going forth. And I will tell you that no matter what the state of Washington does, somebody will say it was too fast and somebody will say it was too slow. And that's just the nature of this decision making. We're doing what we think good judgment and science leads us to do. And so far, that's been very successful in the state of Washington when it comes to saving lives. We'll continue on that path. Governor, uh, if I... Yeah, go ahead, Doc. Is, uh, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to just remind, uh, again, our media partners that we, we also, the Power of the uh, Provider Initiative is not just something across the state that have signed on working with us for the efforts of increased vaccinations. And we also want to shot. Dr. Shaw, Dr. Dr. Shaw, Shaw you're, you're let me just continue your thought a little bit. We do have hopes that the power, Dr. Shaw, why don't you defer because you keep breaking up. I'll, I'll just carry the ball here for a couple minutes. Uh, what Dr. Shaw was re referring to is we do have hopes for the power of provider initiative. We started this with a conversation with over 600 uh, medical providers last week. We got a lot of great response to this. And we believe that when physicians uh, do outreach and have proactive discussion with their citizens, once citizens get the real scoop, once they find out it doesn't change your DNA, once you find out that, in fact, it's safe, we've had hundreds of millions of people get this vaccine with no grave significant results, we have found that once people get that straight information, many, many people get vaccinated. We just need to up our game fighting this misinformation because we know people can change their minds, and I believe will once they get the straight scoop. So we look forward to those initiatives working. Uh, yeah, can, Governor, can you or maybe Lacey explain exactly how contagious the Delta variant is? Specifically, do we know how long it takes to be in a room unmasked with the Delta variant before you're at risk of getting it? Would you like to address that, Lacey? Uh, thanks. We, you know, in terms of time exposure, the the you know, the CDC and we haven't changed the definition of a close contact. However, what we do know about the Delta variant is that it's about twice as transmissible as um, the uh, COVID, um, the virus that causes COVID, which emerged back at the end of 2019. So the um, the first one known to us. Uh, that means you know each person who um, gets infected potentially goes on to infect twice as many people. Uh, so that's a substantial increase. And um, it is part of why we think it's really important to protect uh, kids in school. Um, and it's also really important right now to get vaccinated. Uh, the vaccines are very protective, as you've heard, uh, generally and against the Delta variant. And the more of us who get vaccinated, the less disease there is circulating around, which um, reduces our risk for Delta and any other future variants. The risk for breakthrough cases becoming higher with the Delta variant, or are we still kind of, are those still rare? The, the risk for breakthrough cases, um, you know, is, is low. These vaccines are very effective, as you heard. Uh, Transmission is primarily driven. Uh, the overwhelming amount of transmission is happening among unvaccinated people. So people who have not completed their series, uh, breakthrough cases are rare, um, but they do happen. And so you know, we are encouraging people to number one, get vaccinated. That is the number one thing you can do to protect yourself and your community, including our children. And number two is when you're indoors, uh, that you consider wearing a mask if you are fully vaccinated and a reminder that if you're not, you're required to wear a mask. Um, this is the decision whether or not to be vaccinated is not just an individual decision. It is a decision whether everybody around you is going to be put at risk to get COVID. And the reason is, is that all of us, no matter how virtuous we are or scientifically minded, we can be totally asymptomatic, but give a deadly disease to our coworkers, to our families, to our grandchildren. 
And I've heard way too much talk that this is just somehow the individual is the only person who has a stake in this controversy. This is a community effort where the entire state of Washington today is endangered by those people who have not been vaccinated yet. Now, I think if people know that, they're going to want to get vaccinated because these are good people that don't want to harm the people they love. And if we provide them enough information about this, we believe they're going to make the right decision and we're going to save a lot of lives in this state. You said a few minutes ago that your team is considering things in the next few weeks to try and improve the state's vaccination rates even more. Is part of that considering a new goal? Since we hit 70% two weeks ago in the past, no? Well, yes. Uh, in, yes. The, the reason is, is that it is clearly not effective against this particular variant. This goal may have been um, uh, effective against a 1956 Chevrolet. It is not effective to 2021 a Delta variant. So we now know, which we did not know months ago, that we now face a variant that is a total new threat. It's a new weapon that has been deployed against us, and we have to have a higher vaccination rate. Can't tell you what that is today. We're still looking at research in this regard. By the way, the science, you know, a lot of people said, why have we changed policies, which has been frustrating to all of us? It's because this variant is changed. We have a new enemy every, every month. This thing was only about, help me here, Lacey, it was like 30% of the variant, what, three weeks ago, and now it's up to what, Lacey? What, what's the percentage of the, all the variants is Delta now in the state of Washington? Help me out on this, Lacey. I'm looking for a lifeline here. Yeah, go ahead. Go, Hi, I'm go ahead, Lacey. Yeah, the first two weeks of July, um, the Delta variant was up to 70%, and uh, modeling currently estimates that it's about 96% of our cases in Washington State. So it has uh, increased very quickly over the past month or so. Yeah, and Governor, if I can just, uh, Umair Shah, I don't know if you can hear me okay. Yes, uh, go ahead. Just to say that um, in line with what uh, Lacey and you just described is that we were we were under 5% weeks ago, and then it was 10%, and then 20%, and 40%. And what we've been seeing is every 7 to 10 days, it appears to be doubling. And so the projection, as Lacey just laid out, above 90% uh, is really the concern that we have, is that we are now seeing the Delta variant take hold in our state, especially on those who, who are unvaccinated, but also the concern about transmission. So it, it is increasing, and that is absolutely why we have to change our tactics as well. Um, you know yes, uh, Governor, your, your frustration with the unvaccinated is palpable, um, but they do that a lot of Washingtonians that did what they were supposed to do. They went got vaccinated. They took their families and their children down to get the shot. What do you say to them? I mean, because I think they can use some positive reinforcement or a pat on the back because all I've heard is about the unvaccinated and the unvaccinated. What do you say about to the people who did what they were supposed to do? To those who become vaccinated, a big, huge thank you from the state of Washington. They've taken a step that has protected themselves and everybody else around them. And the reason I say thank you is that they have saved the lives of people they may not even know their names. The person they're sitting next to on a bus, uh, their, their customer who comes to the counter. These are people who have saved lives. They're never going to get a medal and they won't know who they saved, but we know they saved lives. That's a big deal. Now, so it's a big thank you. But there is another thing, because there's always another thing, and that is this. Look, if you got vaccinated and you've done your part, we hope that you'll talk to other people around you and encourage them to do their part. We all have to pull on this rope if we're going to beat this dread disease. You know, and you, you don't like to use war as a metaphor, but you can't fight a battle where 30 percent of your population won't help. And we're in a battle right now for the lives of our citizens. So I do ask people who've been vaccinated, be a leader. Your leadership is important. Your, your love for people in your family is important. 
share information about the vaccine. If you talk to your uncle and he said, well, you know, I heard that it changes your DNA, share information and say, that's a bunch of hogwash. You're getting a bunch of swill on social media, and that's dangerous right now. And if the uncle says, well, I don't know, say, well, look, uncle, could you call Dr. Smith and she'll tell you what the straight scoop is. I'll, let's get her on the phone right now. So that leadership is really important right now for all of us to be leaders, not just, you know, politicians. Governor, going back to the county by county question from earlier, you know, instead of threatening rollbacks for counties with higher case rates, you know, have you considered reintroducing mask mandates for the counties that are well below 60, 70 percent um, with at least one shot? You know, as opposed to saying from closed businesses, have you considered saying, listen, until you get to 65 percent, you got to wear a mask indoors? Look, there are untold number of things that could be in the future if we do not get enough people vaccinated. And there's really not a lot of profit in speculating about all those potentials. There's 30 different strategies that we could pursue. We're focused on what we can do to save young people in schools and keep schools open. We do want people to consider masking, as we've suggested, and focus on getting more people vaccinated. After that, the speculation, and I respect your question, but there's just not a lot of money in speculating about what might happen. I'll tell you this, though. I do not want to shut down a single business in the state of Washington. That's painful for everybody. I want people to enjoy freedom of their lives. And I'm doing everything I can to preserve freedom in their lives by getting people vaccinated. That is the single most important thing we can do in the state government, to make sure that those things never happen. I'm dedicated to that. Nick wanted to say something. Nick Struley is here. I'm going to give the microphone to him. Thanks, Governor. I just wanted to build on your remarks. Earlier this week, you convened uh, several conversations with some of the counties that have lower vaccination rates, where we brought together the healthcare professionals, the, uh, the local elected officials, and the public health folks to talk about the low vaccination rates in their community and try to brainstorm solutions. And they brought forward some good ideas, and we're going to continue to work with them to try to increase those vaccination numbers. Thank you, Nick. You're reminding me of my brilliance. I appreciate that. Yeah, Governor, um, have, has there been any reevaluation of the possibility of uh, creating a vaccine passport of some sort to provide maybe a tool to businesses who want to you know, require vaccines in order to enter, that sort of thing? Uh, not at the moment. We have not uh, really heard a request from the business community who we talk to, you know, on a daily basis. Nick has been really worked really, really hard for months now to stay in contact with business leaders to see what works for them. We really have not seen a request for that. Uh, for instance, with the masking requirement, again, employers have an obligation to see to it that their unmasked employees wear a mask while indoors. And they seem to have been able to manage that relationship without the necessity of a, you know, a certification from the state. That seems to be working. So at the moment, that is not under consideration. Hi, Governor. Uh, acting something as the French government has done, where you would have restrictions on vaccinated people, while vaccinated people would be allowed their lives. It just seems like the unvaccinated people are still kind of the ones causing the problem here. And I'm wondering at what point they would be the ones suffering the ramifications from the business owners who did go out and get vaccinated. As I've indicated, there are any number of strategies that could potentially become necessary. We are trying to avoid those by doing these common sense measures today. And the more people that make a decision today to get vaccinated, the less we would have to consider those type of measures. But look, we are not going to allow our hospitals to be overrun in this state. We're not going to allow a state, the smartest state in the United States, not to use a life-saving uh, medicine that can save people's lives and stop a pandemic. Why would we do that as a state? So we are going to find measures to make sure people get vaccinated. Next 
parents. Do you have any idea when children under age 12 could potentially get the vaccine? And if that happens, will there be mass vaccination efforts once again? Well, yes. It, when they are eligible, we certainly will do everything possible to make it accessible as quickly as possible to children. I don't have any specific timeline. Um, I think it's months rather than weeks, but the administration has not been able to give us a timeline uh, in that regard. We're all very, very anxious for that. Governor. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Governor, just I was adding that the trials for six months of age all the way up to age 11 are in process. But again, um, as Governor mentioned, that it's not going to be a quick turnaround. And so it's likely going to be months time frame, which means that we are left with encouraging vaccines for everybody who's eligible and certainly other steps like we've we've recommended today. And so that's why uh, this is so critical because there remain a number of kids, including my three, who are just ineligible and therefore we have to figure out ways to protect our children as well. Hi, Governor. You said that you were were looking at new ways of getting people to get the vaccines. Um, the vaccine lotteries and such, obviously, we know about all those. Is there something different you're trying to start that's a different approach? And can you tell us more about what that might be? Well, yes. The, the power of providers is a new initiative to fully embrace the people who really know about the vaccine. That's our, that's our physicians and nurses and, and healthcare professionals. That's a new thing we just started last week. As I've indicated, we're off to a good start. I was on a conference call with Dr. Shaw and about 600 practitioners. We hope this is going to succeed. And I'll tell you why we have hopes for this. We, we need to diagnose what the problem is here. And it's pretty clear to me what the problem is, or one of the problems. You know, you, you go like, we don't have a problem of people going to the physician and the doctor says, uh, you have cancer. So, but I have a life-saving medicine here that can save your life. And it's free, and there's virtually you know, no grave problem associated with it. We don't have problems with 30% of the state of Washington saying, no, doctor, I'm not going to take that life-saving medication. We don't have that problem. And yet we have a problem that 30% of the public is not using a life-saving medication that doesn't change your DNA and works and saves your life. Why, why are those situations? Why do we take all the cancer drugs and the heart attack drugs, but why do 30% of our people to date refuse to get or fail to get this vaccine? Well, one of the major problems is our people have been victimized. They are victims of a huge misinformation campaign. Uh, there's a company that actually makes money sowing disinformation. You read about it in the New York Times this weekend. And they have been... They've had to read on the social media all of this terrible uh, misinformation about what this vaccine will do or not do. That's why we're having this problem. So that's why all of us have to band together, and again, including those people who are vaccinated, in giving people the straight information. Uh, and if we do that, we ought to be able to increase these vaccines. And we got other measures as well. Now, we're also considering, as I've indicated, measures involving employment. Some people are in employment where they present a risk to their, to their clients and to the public if they are not vaccinated. We are considering measures to require people to become vaccinated in those conditions. We are considering state employment requirements, but as I've said, we have some discussions to have about that before we would take action. So there are other measures and uh, we need to make sure that they succeed. So you're talking about the, uh, there's a lot of different options that can happen going forward. Are there any possible discussions in requiring healthcare and hospital, hospital workers to be vaccinated? Uh, yes, that is something that uh, could be in consideration. And we will be doing that in the, in the days uh, to come uh, because we don't want hospital workers infecting their patients. Uh, you've seen that uh, uh, there has been some requirements in the VA system uh, the federal government has required 
vaccinations and or regular testing, as I recall. And I can't recall about the testing protocols. So that is something worthy of consideration. We will be considering uh, these measures in the upcoming days. No. Uh, thanks to everybody pulling on the rope here. I've been around his state for 70 years, and I've never been in a moment that is more important for everybody to, to help out. I've never been in a moment where we all need to recognize we're all in this together. I've never been in a moment where misinformation was so dangerous to Washingtonians. And I've never been in a moment where a blessing is so effective, and that's the, these vaccines, which are a medical miracle and a blessing. We put all those things together, and I think we need to main, remain committed to this state and the health of our citizens. And that's what we're doing today. That's what we're going to be doing in the upcoming days. Please be well.